The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. Appreciate you starting your trading day off with me. We pick things up in positive territory. Interesting. When I opened my eyes for the first time in a while this morning, found myself checking the future saying, found that there was actually reason that you could see some downside for the first time. Yesterday, you saw the action. We had Tesla and Netflix earnings coming into the day, uh, pulling back, right? Market really making them pay for some decent earnings, as in all expectations to the upside. You see the sell-off in terms of Netflix going down to 430 yesterday, testing the lows of pre-market. You were at 495, even if you take 482, where you were coming into the close of Wednesday, okay? You're talking about basically $50 to the downside. Today, we're flat, but Tesla, Similar action, a one-way trip from 300 to basically 260 at the end of the day yesterday. So I find myself saying market sold off, right? You're going to see an acceleration. Are we going to see for the first time maybe a potential pullback? Was there reason for the first time? I mean, Wednesday, we were pushing 46.10, folks. There was no reason for this market to see any pressure to the downside. First time that popped up was after the close of Wednesday when we saw Netflix, Tesla, etc., IBM, the flip side of that, trades dramatically higher yesterday from 134 to 140. Nonetheless, we go back to markets and they defy the action. I say, look at this market, man. You can't hold this market down. Uh, NASDAQ 100, even on a day that we're coming into a rebalancing, the stocks have been carrying this index higher. We'll get into that to kick off the program, man. Uh, it's an interesting day, folks. Not often do you have an index like the NASDAQ 100 that has been carrying this market, okay? It's been carrying the S&P, too. And when you think about it, we're taking away demand from the stocks that have carried this market to a certain degree at least. And we'll go over that. Nonetheless, the NASDAQ 100, you're up 7 tenths percent. We've clawed back about 150 points off of the low. We're right back to where we were at about 1030 in the morning yesterday. 15,710. Still about 350 points below where we were trading at on Wednesday, right? That's a 2% hit, man. That is a 2% hit in this index. Yes, we are up. Uh, bonkers numbers to put things lightly for the year, okay? But that's a 2% pullback in the span of what? Two trading days, and we got Friday coming. We got options expiration. We got the rebalancing going on as well. We jump over to some of the commodities, currencies. We'll take a look at the dollar index, as I mentioned in the nine o'clock update, dollar index, right at about 101. We're under that price level now. You're seeing the dollar index up 10 ticks right now at 198. You jump over to the 10 year. So we have a little bit Pretty muted action across the board, right? Be interesting to see how it comes in. We got American Express out with their numbers this morning. We'll get into those as well. They're trading lower though from 179 to 172. You jump over to Visa. No real huge reaction on those numbers for American Express just yet. We're trading at about 240. But let's just get into the rebalancing because we got options expiration, but we got a rebalancing, man. Amazon's up a little bit as you're getting a bounce on these equities. You got to talk about Apple and Microsoft, okay? Apple up almost a dollar. You see the pullback yesterday that we had. You jump over to Microsoft shares, pre pretty similar action. We're trading right now up about $3. Some of the stocks that we're going to talk about there, you jump over to Google. Google up a buck fifty, clawing back some of the losses of yesterday as well. You jump over to Meta shares, Meta up about three dollars almost to three oh five this morning, and we jump over to Broadcom. All right, and we're going to take a look at Broadcom as well. A little bit of a different action. Broadcom, what are they up right now? What ten dollars in the pre market? You're trading at about eight ninety nine with an ask by a bid of about eight ninety seven. And I bring up Broadcom because they're one of the ones that are actually going to benefit. So let's get into it. Okay, here's how it works. What to know about Monday's NASDAQ 100 rebalance, okay? This is as of Monday. So those ETF trackers have to be tracking as of Monday. The rebalance, which takes effect before Monday's opening bell, that means they got to have their chips in line at the end of the day today. What is so interesting about this is that you can't go in too early, right? because then you're not gonna be mimicking the index that you're supposed to be mimicking. So what you wanna get is you wanna get the closing price, 
you add on to it options expiration, we're going to see some volatility, man, and we're going to get into the numbers. So here's how it works. The rebalance, okay, was triggered when the companies in the index with weightings exceeding 4.5% saw their collective weighting surpass 48%, okay? So to say that again, it's, it's having the biggest companies that are above 4.5%. 5% of the weighting, if you combine the biggest companies, okay, so it's okay if you have one company at 10% or 12%, as long as all the companies at 10 and 12 don't equal half of the index, basically, right? Those companies with weightings above 4.5% surpassed 48% of the index, and that is a problem with regulations, okay? So what they're going to do is they're going to rebalance the cap with an aggregate weighting at 40%. So the equities that exceed 4.5% are not gonna represent more than 40% of the NASDAQ 100 index, okay? Now, getting into the exact numbers. Here are the exact numbers of the previous weighting and where they're gonna come into on July 24th, okay? You take a look at this and you're gonna see some losers like Apple. They're gonna go from 12.1%, that's where it was on July 14th of the weighting of the index, they're gonna be at 11.5. They're gonna lose about six tenths percent of weighting, okay? When you look at the flow impact, that is a decline of $1.4 billion of flow. $1.4 billion of basically sales coming into that market. How about Microsoft, man, right? 12.8 to 9.8, how does that one happen? If anybody knows, give us a call, 877-927-6648. Uh, this is gonna be a topic today, man, and interesting how you got Apple coming in at 11.5, Microsoft's gonna come in at 9.8. You go down the line, okay, Google going from 7.6 to 5.7, that's 4.8 billion in outflows. Microsoft is 7.4 billion in outflows. Amazon takes a hit from 6.9% to 5.3. That's a $4.1 billion outflow estimate. Meta, and this is where it gets interesting, right? Even if you're at 4.5% right now, they even need to bring you down. Because if you're at 4.5% right now, and they bring down the weighting of the bigger stocks, your, your weighting will actually rise in the index potentially. So they have to bring on those equities as well. So Meta goes from 4.4 to 3.7. You got Tesla going from 4.5 to 3.4 weighting in the index. And then what happens? Then there's your sweet spot where you actually increase, where the members who are at, because everybody below the, everybody besides, to put it this way, Tesla, Meta, NVIDIA, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Apple, the Magnificent Seven, okay? I mean, talk about changing the rules, right? They're literally the Magnificent Seven, and what does the NASDAQ do? And listen, it's for regulation, okay? There's no conspiracy. but. Every other stock besides those seven is going to benefit here with a greater weighting. Broadcom, the biggest of them all, going from 2.4 to 3% weighting. That's $1.6 billion in inflows. You see it down the list, man. We'll talk about this a little bit more. Even a company like Pepsi in the NASDAQ 100 going from 1.7% to 2.1%. So it's going to be an interesting Friday, man. All of that in flux this morning. And we have markets in positive territory coming into that rebalancing. What's the index going to be like when the biggest players out there making the biggest runs in the market don't have the weighting they once did? We'll find out. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a lot to talk about on Friday. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets right where we picked off the program, picked up the program. Excuse me. I had a little bit of sneezing allergy fit during the break there. S&P's up 22, folks. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 7 tenths percent. Getting back to that, excuse me, that article one more time. I mean, you look at the Q's alone, okay? The Q's got $200 billion in net assets alone. Excuse me, let alone the impact that will have on other funds down the line. If you take a look at the impact, okay, for some context, context is so important in life, folks. Uh, many conversations, I feel like they lack the context necessary. Whether you're talking about finance, you're talking about inflation, uh, you're talking about politics, man, that's the worst of all, where everybody just lacks context and you can say anything. Context, okay? The general change in the index is largely exaggerated, is one opinion. But here's the deal. Apple had a previous weighting of 12.06%, okay? You get a 10% move in Apple, that would hit the index at about 1.21% to the upside, okay? With the new weighting, that same 10% move in Apple is gonna move the index 1.15%. So you're talking about Apple alone moving 10% in the index will only impact the index with a difference of 0.06%. Okay? Important to put things in context. They're still going to be running the show here when you talk about these equities now combining to reach 40% of the index. And all you got to do is go down a couple more to get to where you're at that threshold, right? Uh, if each of the Magnificent Seven, okay, move 10%, the total change in the NASDAQ at the new rebalance weight would be 4.37% versus 5.55%. So that's if you get all seven stocks moving 10% to the upside, their influence in the NASDAQ 100 will be 4.37% to the upside versus 5.55. So what is that? That's a 1.18% hit if they all move 10%. So it will matter. Uh, but there's still going to be mammoths in there. You know, they're still going to be pushing around everybody. And all you got to do is go down the line a bit to these next biggest companies. OK, when I'm talking about Broadcom, I mean, put them on your put them on your radar, man, because if you're trading the Nasdaq 100, right, look at what Broadcom just did. Look at what Pepsi just did. One point six five to two point one percent influence. Costco gets one point five eight to two percent. Adobe, Cisco, Netflix gets a nice jump up there. OK, Comcast, T-Mobile. Uh, down the list we go. Intel, 
right? Some of these boosts are dramatic. Even Starbucks, you get a basically 25% boost, as in you go from 0.8% to 1% holding, AMAT as well. Uh, so all of that happens as of the close, man. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out today, and we get to see it play out in real time. Nonetheless, the markets pick it up. Uh, maybe some of that rebalancing got done yesterday, and maybe they're going to – Use options today to mimic the returns on the ETF to some degree because there was quite a sell-off. There was quite a divergence. I'm sure we all saw it if you were paying attention, man. The NASDAQ 100 at one point traded down about 350 points from open to close, right? Mostly selling. Not many areas of buying all day from 15.9 to 15,550. You take a look at the S&Ps, a little bit of a different story. As in, yeah, you traded down 33 points, okay? But all of it had to do with some of the actions of the biggest players out there, like Microsoft, which dropped $12 from where it was at the beginning of the day, right? What did I just talk about? Microsoft had one of the biggest cuts in waiting out there. You talk about Apple. They took a hit as well. Apple traded down $3 and change. Uh, nonetheless, so we'll see it play out today. It's going to be a wild one, man. Stay tuned. All right, what else we got going on here? We got a lot pulled up. Uh, let's talk some tech. Sergey Brin, he's back in the mix. The Wall Street Journal, uh, back in the trenches at Google, working alongside AI researchers at the tech giant's headquarters, aiding efforts to build powerful Gemini system. Uh, these founders, man, they know the race is on, right? Y you are first to market with AI and you change the world. going to be really hard to catch up, especially when you think about, right? Do this. I mean, the race is on in terms of if you're first to market, you're going to make all the money first, which is going to let you put money into development, which is going to let you make more money down the line, et cetera. Uh, so not surprising. You're seeing this type of attention as you got the founders back in there working with the long-awaited AI model Gemini. And that's happening everywhere, I'm sure, man. You don't think Amazon, you don't think Bezos is out there making sure that Jazzy is making sure that they're going to be around when you talk about AI? We jump to Meta. Speaking of Magnificent 7, Thread's user engagement continues to drop, adding urgency for new features. Data shows user engagement has fallen 70% as executives focus on options such as a chronological feed. Listen, this thing is in its infancy. infancy. You're going to say this, see this play out over years, okay? Uh, and yes, everybody downloaded their account in terms of getting a Thread's account. If you haven't, folks, why not get over there if you plan on using anything Get over there and grab your name if you're even interested. If you have a Instagram account, I encourage you to just sign up for it anyway if you have an Instagram account. Facebook's already got your info in that situation anyway. And it it's in some version basically free digital real estate. And then nothing's free, okay? Don't be confused. They own it. But go out there and grab your name because Threads is going to be around, man. They're not going anywhere, okay? And Zuckerberg knows that this is a platform that he can compete on. There's your daily active users, right? They launch, the thing goes bonkers to 44 million. You're back to 13 or 14 million. The other way to put that, folks, is that they just launched and they got daily active users of tens of millions of people on their Threads app, right? 100 million signups in a week. Now they have to work on engagement, but that can happen, especially when you control Facebook, especially when you control Instagram, you control WhatsApp, and uh, they have the power to do it. But nonetheless, not too surprising you're seeing those numbers dip a bit. Look, it just keeps going, man. It's all Magnificent 7, right? Uh, the FTC withdraws the case against the Microsoft Activision deal. The companies earlier agreed to extend the merger deadline. It looks like it just keeps getting better and better, as in regulators opening up to the idea of that deal getting done. We saw that come through. Uh, when was it? I got it. There's so many jumps on these charts, man, on a weekly basis. Let's put it on a daily. Yeah, I almost can't see. I think... No, that wasn't. That was the pricing. I have to recalibrate my brain to where this thing spiked on the Activision deal news. Nonetheless, no, no, that's right. It's the Activision stock that chopped. There it was. Uh, July 11th. So this thing pushing 92 from 82. We're going to open at 92 bucks as that deal is baked into getting done. Microsoft shares. Yeah, that pullback was that they're going to be pricing their AI co-pilot uh, at an expensive price. And it makes sense, man. Because they have basically figured out that people are going to be willing to pay. Productivity is about to go through the roof, man. For the people that are still in the jobs that they're in and using AI, 
yeah, productivity is going to go through the roof. And we're going to see how it plays out in terms of for the NASDAQ 100 as well. All I can say is, boy, we've got a lot of optimism built into these markets, man. Levels that we have not seen in a while. And it's especially interesting, that, right, that what happens? I mean, I talked about it in my program yesterday, I believe. Microsoft, folks, Microsoft has added a trillion dollars in market cap from where we were at the beginning of the year. Microsoft, not Apple, Microsoft. Apple has done it as well, okay? They've been one-way trips for the better part of seven months and you're talking about companies with 16 billion shares outstanding, adding $75 to their share price. Remarkable accelerations, optimism, pushing all-time highs right now. And uh, we're coming into earnings season, and we're coming into a rebalancing right at those highs. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF and.com Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. A little bit of a sell-off near that opening bell. Markets still green across the board with the S&Ps up by 14 right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 83. Got the Dow up by 63 and the Russell up by 10 right now. We jump over to the dollar index as we kick off the trading day. Back above 100. 10101 for the dollar index. We take a look at yields right now. Up above five basis uh, 
Five ticks, 112.09. On the 10-year right now, we jump over to the VIX, sitting comfortably at about 13.76. We see how some of those big dogs are doing. Clawing back some of the losses of yesterday. As Apple's up six tenths percent right now, we jump over to Microsoft shares up three tenths percent right now. Google shares up eight tenths percent right now. Tesla up one point three percent right now. Yeah, green across the board for the Magnificent Seven, and even companies like Adobe catching a lift up one point two percent. Right, interesting. Costco up three quarters percent. Some of these equities, the ones that are getting added, waiting into the. NASDAQ 100. Yeah, and you don't have to look hard, man. Look at these companies, right? Yesterday, Pepsi from 187 to 190, right? Costco, the rebalancing started right at the open from 554 to 560. And then maybe they just get it done with options today to mimic the impact of the ETFs that they're talking about. Because you see those, you see the run that they've had uh, leading up to that. Even a company like Starbucks, right, actually saw higher prices before the sell-off later in the day. And just like that, though, Starbucks up 1.6% so far this morning. We jump to Netflix, too. Netflix, following their week numbers on Wednesday, their week outlook for revenue, 434, down 8 tenths percent. We were trading almost $50 higher when we were coming into those numbers on Wednesday. Now, this is a case of optimism, man. Okay, those were decent numbers. I talked about it yesterday. They added 6 million subscribers, man. Not that long ago, when we were in some of these quarters, I think this was the quarter, right? Back it up just over a year ago, everyone was talking about the Netflix was done growing, man. The growth was over. I'm not sure. Maybe it was the January quarter of 2022, but I think it was later in the year that you're talking about April. The writing became on the wall that the market was said, hey, they have may have reached uh, peak saturation in terms of everybody in the market. They grew 6 million subscribers, man. They got password crackdowns going on, and that's going to have some lag. Okay, there's a lot of people out there. They probably are still using it to some capacity, haven't lost coverage yet, haven't lost the ability to use everybody else's account that they've been mooching off. And nonetheless, we're trading at 436 right now from 162 for Netflix. Now, I bring up Netflix because we got the writer's strike going on, and they are well positioned right now, Netflix. They have more run, run room, okay, than basically more runway, as they put it here, than the legacy networks. And this one's going to start playing out, man. We're coming into, you're supposed to usually have production going on in the summer, and then you got fall TV getting hit, okay? Biggest strike in 60 years, and there is so much at stake here. My friends and I were talking about this yesterday. One of my good friends has a brother who lives in L.A. and is in the business. And what's so interesting here is that you look at something like owning – the name, image, and likeness of like a background actor, right? And then you look at where AI is going. So what you first have is, think about it this way, what AI is going to do, okay, is that AI is going to be able to take images of certain people, right, and probably use that image to create an actor of its own in the background or something, right? So in that case, let's say you have uh, Joe Sullivan, right? Joe Sullivan's a background actor in some television show or movie that gets produced. Joe Sullivan's name, image, and likeness is recorded on camera. The AI system then uses the image of Joe Sullivan to create another image, okay, of another background actor. Maybe it's similar. Maybe it's based off him, okay, in that background actor or whatever it is, right? AI is going to get better and better. So in that instance, you could see how Joe Sullivan would have some claim to the fact that his name, his image, uh, the recording of him is being used for future production with no benefit to him. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more interesting, okay? As AI gets better and better, Right. What is it going to do? First, it's going to have to base its images off of certain people. OK. And it's going to use those memories, those data points to create AI generated actors. OK. But as generations go, it's then going to what? It's going to start using itself and just create basically its own image that is not based off any one individual background actor, but at that time, the AI system may may have learned enough, okay, well, probably will have learned enough to basically use its entirety of knowledge that it's gained over so many data points to create its own AI-generated background actor that basically is based off no individual person, but 
here's the toughest part of this, right? Once AI gets to that point in time, will you be able to say that that name, image, and likeness of the characters being created is based off of nobody? Or will you be able to say that that actor that is created by AI is actually, okay, a creation using the rights to the images of 200 different actors, right? As in, is everybody due some compensation that the AI system is using to generate those new actors down the line? Or is nobody due compensation because AI has gotten so smart that it's no longer using a specific image of one specific person to generate an AI-generated actor? This is why those name, image, and likeness battles that are going on are so important to the studios and the actors right now because some of the deals that are going to get done – if you give AI the benefit to use those images going forward with no payments whatsoever, the cat may be out of the bag. They may have enough information. The AI systems may be able to use that information right now to create background actors forever. I mean, I know I'm going a little bit forward gapping, but those are the biggest battles going on here right now. Uh, and you get into some of the numbers, okay? This is just talking about shows in terms of where they show up. You have some companies that are going to have a few shows, right, that are already produced. They're going to be ready. They're going to be in the fall. Something that's happening, though, is that they're not sure they're going to push out all these programs, even if they are fully ready. Some of them are going to come out for sure, okay? But some of them may not come out. Some of the movies may not come out if the actors involved in them don't want to participate in the promotions. So that's going to be a pushback as well. You have advertisers, okay, they made spending commitments this spring thinking that shows like uh, Young Sheldon, Law & Order SVU, SVU, Abbott Elementary, not familiar with that one, definitely familiar with Law & Order SVU, seems like that show's been on TV for about 30 years, uh, would be in production in summer so they'd have a fall season, no fall season for them. It's going to be a lot of reruns coming down the line. In the premium cable and streaming world? You're going to have some programs, okay? HBO is set through the middle of next year. They're going to have True Detective. They're going to have House of Dragon out there as well. But after that, you're going to be in some problems, okay? The work stoppage through the year's end could push the next installments of high-profile shows like Euphoria and The White Lotus into 2025. You're talking about probably a couple of years for some of those programs, all right? We'll finish this conversation up, um, but yeah. They, they may play hardball, man, and it may be in their interest to play hardball, those writers and those actors, because you give those studios everything, you give them all those images, AI is not going to be far away, man. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps up about 14 right now. NASDAQ up about 84, holding on to pretty much those gains as we kicked off the trading day. Russell pulls back a bit, though, up only five right now. We jump over to American Express, digesting their numbers off 4.4% for American Express, 169.43. So far this morning, we check out some of those magnificent seven. We kick it off with Apple. Clawing back some of the losses of yesterday. Apple up 6 tenths percent. Microsoft up 6 tenths percent as well. Google. Up six tenths percent. We got it across the board right now. Meta shares up two tenths percent. Tesla down a bit, off one tenth percent, one tenth percent. Nvidia shares slightly in the red as well. And Adobe, the biggest gainer out there for the rebalancing, they're catching a bid, up one point eight percent. Pepsi as well, up seven tenths percent. Right, interesting to see that divergence happening. But we got markets in green across the board. You have the companies at the top losing weighting that are in positive territory, and you got the companies gaining weighting in positive territory. Interesting. To, to, to say the least, as we come into that rebalancing, kicking off trading on Monday. All right, jumping back to the Hollywood strike for a moment here. Just some of the things that they're going to be battling with here. A couple things to keep in mind, right? You're going to see these companies spend less because they can't produce, because they have no writers or actors. So you're going to see their costs come down. But guess what? They're going to go back up when they come back into uh, the workforce. So you're going to see some free cash flow. All right. Netflix said on Wednesday, didn't help them, that yeah, they're going to have stronger than expected free cash flow because their content spending is going to be lower this year as a result of the strike. But that's going to go back up because that money is there. It's, uh, it's planned to be spent on production. And you're going to see that money spent in an accelerated fashion when people come back to the workforce and start producing again. Now, getting into some of the numbers they're talking about here. What really they're talking about, okay, is the money that you're able to keep, okay, when you go forward. And that you talk about where it used to be, and they talk about it in here, right? Syndication, 100 episodes, right? Five seasons worth of an episode, and boom, you could sell that off for syndication. You had actors that had back ends making money in here. There's one instance here. Uh, let's see, they have an actor, Nelson Franklin. He was in 40 episodes of Blackish, a show that went into syndication. He said a good year in traditional TV. He could be in eight episodes, make 7000 bucks a piece, plus residuals. Well, in streaming, he makes 8000 bucks a year for the same work because you're not getting paid for those same residuals because it lives on the streaming forever. And that's where they're really battling here on top of AI. The whole business plan has changed. Just cherry picking a few different facts. It's an interesting one, man. Um, they have a lot to argue over. Oh, in this one, Netflix isn't the only one with a deep library. Warner's Max, HBO Max, or Max now has fresh content to get through the middle of next year, but some big projects stalled before they really got off the ground, including Harry Potter. So, um, yeah, going to be especially interesting to see where that one ends, man, because, boy, they are miles apart from what it seems, and everything is at stake going forward. Look at this market pullback a little bit. Dow 
back in negative territory. We just sold off almost 100 points from the open, 35,380 right now. NASDAQ holding on to the gains up seven tenths percent. Look at that. NASDAQ 100 is the leader today, man. Looks like they took their pain yesterday and got it over with. S&Ps up by 11. That's a quarter percent right now. Now, let's see. What else do we got pulled up here? Yeah, let's talk a little bit of heat, man. If you're out there, please stay safe, okay? This is not a joke, These the, the heat that we're dealing with right now, especially if you're doing any type of strenuous activities outside. Stay hydrated. And like we had our man Larry Pezzavento. He did his program early this morning because they got rolling blackouts going on in Arizona, man. They got like three hours on, four hours off. I was talking to Larry yesterday. He um, He's doing good. He's all right. He says it's not getting above really 78 in his – home which is good because that's scary stuff man that seems like that's that's dangerous to people's health even with a rolling blackout of three to four hours man four hours with no ac folks in heat as somebody coming from florida okay that is a long time that can really heat things up to an uncomfortable basis on a constant basis etc now this article from the journal this is today when is it too hot to keep working in most states companies decide uh you know, I'm not going to jump on my soapbox for long, folks, but we are in a different world right now. OK, you got Arizona. you got temperatures, what, like three straight weeks above 110 degrees. It would be in everybody's best interest to put some regulations in place when it comes to heat to that degree uh, of workers' rights. Otherwise, private business, OK, is not going to be able to protect their workers on this level of heat. That's the truth of it, man. And you can always – remember earlier in the program I was talking about context and how it's so important and how it's so easy to lack context when you're having arguments? Well, anybody from what I just said can say in the background, back to me, but regulations hurt job creation and we want the economy to be strong. So we got to be careful with regulations that we put on companies, okay? Just realize when you say that, folks, have a little common sense sometimes. Include a little bit of context. Realize that Arizona is dealing with heat that is three weeks straight at 110 degrees. Florida, okay, even Florida, man. We know the heat's in, uh, accelerating. Last night, I'll give you an example. I was outside about 7.30 last night. And I was like, man, it's hot still. And it is humid in Florida, folks, okay? They got the dry heat in Arizona at 117. We got up to like 90, 92, 95. Um the sweat, the humidity, pretty intense. Last night, it was 88 degrees at about 7.30 and felt like 98 degrees. Felt like 98 degrees, all right? And it did. That's real, man. It feels like that hot when you're sweating that much. And that's like right before sunset, folks, okay? There should be some standard regulations that are going to be put in place because we are at a new norm um, on these levels. You know, the bummer of it, I'm not sure if you saw, you had Texas out there recently. Yeah, yeah. A bill signed last month by the governor, okay, it bans local ordinances in the city such as Dallas and Austin that mandate rests and water breaks when the temperature rises. The law, set to take effect in September, prevents cities and counties from creating local ordinances that go further than what is allowed under state law. Now, listen, you always got the battle going on between whether it's the federal governments and the states, right, between the states and the localities, who gets to say what. It's all a big power trip, okay? This deal in Texas, though, folks— this deal required a 10-minute break every four hours. A 10-minute break every four hours. That is a joke, okay? That's not going to do anything. And even that, they're saying, will hurt businesses, okay? Uh, the move in Texas is backed by the construction industry, which says such municipal rules are too onerous. Folks, look it up. It was 10-minute break every four hours, okay? Now, this is real out here. I tell you, I went so I went for a little jog run yesterday. Now, be careful out there, folks. Okay, I I, I was sweating my butt off, um, but I'm used to it. I try and get a little exercise throughout the day at some point—30 minutes, 45 minutes. Get outside, and I'll tell you, <clears throat> when I go work out, we're gonna finish this. The amount of water weight that you can lose in a workout is tremendous. Most people wouldn't even realize it, man. I can lose four to five pounds over an hour, and it's all water. Four to five pounds. Now, think about it. That's a 16-ounce bottle of water is one pound. That is five bottles of water that your body can lose in one hour. One hour. Five bottles of water. We're going to show you, man, how quickly that can escalate um, to some pretty scary stuff when you're dealing with these types of temperatures. We'll finish up with the market as well, folks. We'll take a look. Stay tuned. One more segment. We'll be right back.
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Stocks giving it up a bit right now. Meta shares in the red. You got the NASDAQ 100 barely in the positive by 43 right now. Dow in the red. Russell in the red. S&P is holding on to gains, but just by four points. We've sold off about 20 from right near the open, from 45.90 to 45.70 right now in the S&P. So getting back to that heat, man. Uh, yeah, so be aware, folks. And that is not what you can often see sometimes, especially in Florida. I mean, the humidity, you're sweating so much. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of exercise to start sweating a lot. You take a water, a walk in the sun, folks, um, and I just know because I've weighed myself, you're losing four to five pounds an hour. So imagine if you're out there for three or four hours, right? Of course, that's diminishing returns. You can't lose that amount of water that drastically the whole time because you're running out of it. But it doesn't take much, man, to get to levels. Looking at this, now this is based off a 150-pound person, okay? But yeah. You start getting to, I mean, I just mentioned, these are 17-ounce bottles. They're basically one per pound. You're going to lose about four or five per an hour. Two hours over that time, you're right up to near that level, man. You do two or three hours out there, you're sweating off that type of water. Uh, yeah, you better be careful, okay? You're going to see heart rate, body temperature, swollen tongue. 
difficult to talk because you probably got dry mouth and then you start getting a little woozy on top of it uh pay attention folks okay get some air conditioning get some water in you by the time you realize that you're dehydrated it's already too late you're behind the eight ball and it's very difficult to catch up if you're familiar with athletes sometimes you hear them talk about right uh especially on something like endurance athletes if you're running a marathon if you're running an ultra marathon if you're doing an ironman they talk about if you get to the point that you're dehydrated you're done you can't catch up man you can't catch up you got to stay ahead of it drink some water stay safe out there and how about some regulations man okay you see some of these quotes that i read in here talking about the business groups uh it, it's got to happen, folks, okay? You're talking about hundreds of people, if not thousands of people dying. It's only going to get worse. If we had Bureau of Labor Statistics listed 436 people over 10 years, that's all happening in the summer, too, okay? That'd be like people dropping out of buildings once a week and just being like, ah, it's hot. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, folks. We're going to have an interesting day in the markets. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you Monday.